it's important to recognize that our schools are the driver of our local community. Really, that the reason that our local community thrives and that communities across our state thrive is because of the, the quality of the schools that are in their communities. Hello and welcome to the hashtag proud to be LBUSD podcast. Uh, today we are talking about school bonds. Our guest today is Mr. Alan Rising, who is LBUSD's business service administrator. And a little context for our audience, over the summer, the district's Board of Education approved the placement of a $1.7 billion bond known as Measure Q on the November 8 ballot. Um, and so Alan is here to tell us more about Measure Q. Uh, Alan, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Chris. Good morning. Yeah, welcome. I appreciate the opportunity to come down and talk a little bit about, about the work that we're doing in our facilities department to help support uh, teachers and students across our district. Awesome. So as we get into it, let's let's hear about a little bit about you. So can you tell uh, the audience just uh, your background, what you do for uh, the district? I know you 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 your face has been out there, right? You've been yes. in board meetings and presenting stuff, but just for this podcast, a little bit about who you are, and then we'll kind of get into what the bond measure really is. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I've been out there, been out doing community meetings. Maybe some of you out there may have already seen me at community meetings uh, over the years as we've helped to move forward some of the work that we're currently doing in our district. But uh, for myself, I've been uh, involved helping to support teachers and students for a little bit over 35 years now in, in schools. And so I've been involved at, at pretty much all levels of uh, school administration and school management, all the way from back in the days when I used to actually do some of this work myself, all the way now to where I help support the folks that do it and help support the teachers that, that, that do that. My role as the business services manager is I help provide executive leadership for our district's maintenance teams, our district operations, which is our custodial team, transportation, uh, nutrition services, as well as our facilities construction program, which which we're talking about today, our major Q program today. So yeah, vast uh, experience and and uh, and uh, work that I've done in schools and love it, love every love it every day when I come in. And that's I think so. You not just unique to Long Beach, but what I love about Long Beach Unified is that. Our, a lot of our leadership have had a vast experience in different aspects of the system, which is so important, right? Because it's so, I said this on many podcasts that the classroom, right, is the focus, right? And that's the mm -hmm. heart of what's happening with our kids in the classroom. But to make that work, there's so much. And I think of talking to um, one of your staff members, David Miranda, about that, about how so much of the work that you're all doing allows that to, that to happen day to day. And without your teams and your staff and the mass men employees that you work yeah. with, we couldn't, yeah. we couldn't educate kids. Absolutely. You know, and so much of what we do in a school is focused on the teacher and student, and it should be, right? Because that's really where the magic happens. But it takes an army of folks to really keep that those teachers and students supported in a way that they can be the most productive uh, the, the most beneficial and have things that we're talking about today, the very best facility so they can be productive and they can perform, perform at their absolute best. And so uh, folks that throughout our organization that work day in and day out and work hard to ensure that uh, a teacher has the very best location, has the very best support, has all the things that they need in order to, to work with, with their, the children that they work with effectively. So it's so important and I enjoy it so much. And so with that, you know, I, uh, you know, uh, we have working families, people are busy, they watch the news, they maybe see our board meeting, um, and they hear about bond measures, but sometimes it's it's difficult to understand really what what's true, what's not out mm -hmm. there. And so let's get into that. Let's talk about facilities. So first question, why was this measure Q placed on the November ballot, November 8th ballot? Yeah, uh, thank you. It, it's important we start kind of at, at, a, at a level of where the district l looked at what our needs are. So back in, in, uh, in, June of 2022, uh, we presented to the board an assessment called our uh, 2022 Facilities Master Plan. What the master plan was, it was a, a, a really close look that our district did at all of our school facilities. So we looked at not only what the current needs are, where we have you know things that need to be repaired or, or, or worked on, but also what the goals of the district are educationally. Uh, what the needs are is for facility space at our school districts, as they're changing demographics. We looked at all of those different uh, uh, metrics and put that together into a long range guiding document that helps us to really uh, understand what we need to plan for in the future. That document, when, when it was all said and done, that document represented about $3.8 billion in facilities need that we have district wide. This goes all the way from upgrading for ADA, you know, access, uh, accessibility issues for, for individuals that, uh, that have uh, mobility challenges, uh, 
to new computer computer labs, new computer systems, new career technical education facilities, um, new language programs, uh, new special ed uh, opportunities and, and spaces, uh, new uh, uh, transitional kindergarten, y- young early ed programs that, that were included in that plan. So ultimately, that plan represented that we had about $3.8 billion in, in need. Uh, when we looked at what the available resources we had district-wide, this is from our past bond initiatives that, that we're currently still working on, as well as uh, resources available from the state, uh, it just far outpaced that. So ultimately, the district looked at uh, how we would generate additional funds to be able to uh, to uh, help us to move these projects forward. Uh, working with the state, looking at some of the state monies that are available for us, as well as uh, some of our some of our other f- uh, funding resources available to to do this work, it really showed a significant shortfall. And so uh, we're left with with uh, coming to the voters and asking the voters to help support us for a $1.7 billion school facilities program that will help to bring all of these needed improvements to our to our schools. Things such as, again, computer labs, technology upgrades, uh, career technical education programs that help to uh, teach children real life skills that allow them to get uh, good high paying jobs in the industry. Uh, schools uh, to help our schools to become a driver for 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 the economy in our district and really keep our our uh, school district and our cities uh, as places to come to. And it's it's huge, right? Because you think about we're such a large district, you know, and you you think of all these facilities that are aging, and you know, in, in our line of work, we you know we're kind of the historians of the district sometimes, going all the way back to 1889. And, and when I've talked to David Moran about this, you know, I mean, I, we have old buildings and things yes. have to be fixed, and there's yes. so much, so. You kind of touched on it already, but are there any highlights of, pro- of measure for, for projects for Measure Q that that'll fund that you'd like to share with the public? Yeah, it, uh, and thank you for that. It's important to, to recognize that that the average age of our schools are is somewhere around sixty two years old. With many many of our buildings uh, have been built over a century ago, and what comes with that is the need for basic upgrades, fire life safety upgrades, safety upgrades. Uh, uh, areas where we want to improve upon uh, career technical education programs that I mentioned, you know, opportunities for kids to learn real life skills that they can immediately apply uh, apply on on the job. Uh, really looking at uh, relevant and current library and media spaces for children to be able to to engage and and uh, work together for on on combined projects. Uh, you know, we there, there's been a renewed focus on security and safety in our school sites. So ensuring that we have uh, the best systems to keep intruders out or anybody that would, that may want to come onto our school district that shouldn't be there. Uh, also, uh, things like fire alarm systems, things like uh, things like uh, camera systems in our school site to ensure that we have the safest uh, uh, perimeters in in our schools. So these are all uh, what we kind of collectively refer to as our core facilities projects. Uh, uh, other, other examples are things like nutrition services programs, really looking at our kitchen facilities and, 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 uh, how we provide meals to the, to the 65,000 students and the community, uh, at our school sites are, are important. These are all types of projects that we'll be investing in, in, with, with this major queue. It's like my mind spins when I think about that, right? Cause I think about, I know, I know y'all have been working on, um, the, uh, uh, installing all the new furniture into our TK and, and K classes mm-hmm. this last year and all of that work. And, you know, we've got, we're highlighting some of that stuff and, and think I'm thinking about the investment and all of that, how much that actually really supports learning and instruction deep in the classroom all the way to when you, when you mentioned CTE for people who don't maybe understand really career technical education. I mean, we're mm-hmm. talking about amazing engineering labs and biomedical health. And we have, I know of at least two courtrooms, yes. uh, mock courtrooms in our high schools. I mean, that's phenomenal, right? Millican and Cabrillo. And so mm-hmm. it's just seeing more of that. And then to the basics you're talking about, about the just protection, safety, making sure our children are safe yes. when they're on our campus and our staff. Yeah. It's it's really all of those demands that come our way in the facilities department from the basic things, the repairs and the upgrades and the, and structural safety upgrades at our school sites as we look at making sure that our, that our buildings are the safest buildings they possibly can be. All the way to adding that additional functionality. You know, you mentioned courtrooms. Yes, we've built criminal justice courtrooms to for for, for programs that actually help to support the children that want to get into to those to those areas of our of our community. Uh, 
Career technical education is a broad field that includes all the, all the way from engineering labs where they're learning how to operate a computer, computer controlled machinery to, to manufacture and build various different parts and, and pieces uh, to uh, computer aided drafting skills to be able to learn how to uh, program those machines and be able to do to do that work. Uh, so it's, it's a vast array of, of different uh, technologies that all require us to have additional funds to be able to build those spaces, those, those current and relevant spaces that allow children to be uh, to get the, that leg up as they go into other facets of their life, whether that's, that's uh, post high school education or getting into higher education or whether that's being ready to go right into internships uh, for on the job training or even right into our industries where, where you're getting right into manufacturing or you're getting right into, into uh, construction industries. We have various different construction uh, uh, programs out there at our school sites, too, that helps kids get right into the construction industry, which is something that's right after my own heart. And that's so cool. I mean, I think about that all the time. I've been in the classroom for I think about five or six years now and how much things have changed just in that amount of time and how awesome, you know, when you talked about in the beginning, the facilities master plan and, and, and even your experience, how you know, our curriculum office does all of this amazing work and, and looks at data and research to try to build the highest level of instructional um, content and curriculum and training for teachers. But as a district, we're looking at it really every aspect. I mean, you're providing the environment and your team is mm -hmm. providing the environment that kids need to be able to learn these skills, these 21st century skills school in the world. So there's a huge benefit for our kids, which is the number one priority. What are, are there any benefits Measure Q could provide to our community? Like when you're thinking about the general community overall? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, it's important to recognize that our schools are the driver of our local community. Really, the, the reason that our local community thrives and that communities across our state thrive is because of the, the quality of the schools that are in their communities. It really helps to sustain industry. Because if we have the best trained and best and uh, most uh, uh, students that are ready for the industries coming out of our schools, it helps to drive in industry. How we teach children today help us to drive innovation in the future. The things that were that were benefiting in our society today came from students of the past, and and that's because they were supported by quality school systems to be able to develop those things. It really helps to bring uh, industry to our community, drives up our property values. It 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 keeps the Long Beach Unified School District, the cities that we represent, as, as places to come. People still want to come here because of the industry, because of the community, because of the connection that we have to our schools and the quality schools that their children can, can, can benefit from. So it's so important beyond even the borders of our district to the local community and, and the local industry that we support. And so, you know, uh, we have a ton of of employees that live in the city, right? So they even have a stake in the game, maybe could be homeowners. And we, you know, it's, it's a, you know, we, you know, everybody jokes about Long Beach, right? It's this uh, small town, big city kind of, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, how are the voters going to know that measure Q funds are going to be used responsibly? How do you, how do you approach that question? Cause I'm sure that's on everybody's mind. Yeah. Yeah. Fiscal responsibility with these, these, these resources is so important. Uh, so measure Q, the, the, the way the board has, has, has positioned major Q. It has various different fiscal safeguards in, incorporated in there. Number one is uh, we have an appointed uh, citizens oversight committee. This is members of our community from various different aspects of our uh, our community that have been uh, appointed to be fiscal oversight for our bond bond funds to ensure that every dollar that that we're entrusted with by our community is spent for those very same projects that that we told the community that we were going to spend them for. Uh, this money cannot be used for administrator salaries. We won't be using it for, for teacher administrator salaries. It will be going directly into school facilities to ensure that uh, school facility uh, are benefiting directly and the programs that we promised our voters uh, would, are being executed. In addition to that, uh, all of these funds are subjected to annual independent third-party audits. So there's a third party audit firm that comes in and looks at every dollar that we spend in our bond, every dollar that we receive from our from our voters in the bond and ensure that those dollars are, are spent according to the terms of, the, of that was approved by our voters. There's a significant amount of oversight to ensure that the money that we would potentially be entrusted with by our voters, that we're using it in the way that it, it was actually intended to be used. And I love that. I love how you summarize that because that's so important, right? Because it's, if our our world is so complex within any public mm -hmm. institution or agency, and especially a large school district, and we, we talked about administrator salaries, right? People are like, "Well, you're just getting more money to 
give people bonuses. Well, that yeah. doesn't work that way. You know, that's not, it's not legal. Yeah. It's not possible. And we, I, I like you're talking about that oversight, having yeah. community input and pieces in there, but really that this is tightly regulated and transparent. I mean, Absolutely. it's, it's, it's not a hidden process. At yeah. The end of the day. Yeah. There is that, that general feeling that, or there's been that statement that some of this money will be used to just, you know, give teachers raises or give administrator raises or go to more administration at the central office. That's the farthest from the truth. It cannot be used for that. And we, we ensure that we've instilled safeguards to ensure all of those monies are going to the projects that we actually to told, uh, told the voters that we were going to uh, spend it on. Uh, it can only be used for the support of those projects and only be used for the actual construction that's, that's being done at school sites. So say I'm still playing devil's advocate and I want to push, is there any other way to update our schools? I mean, is there, is there a way to say we can dip into other funds? Mm -hmm. Where can we go if we just don't want to do this? Yeah, this is an area where, where I'm very passionate about it. as I work in addition to the district, I also work in the state level to help, uh, to help work with some of our state legislators about uh, consistent school funding. And that's been the problem. That's mm -hmm. the catch word. Uh, one of the challenges that we have when we talk about school facilities is finding a way of consistent funding for our school facilities. And unfortunately in our state, it, do it doesn't exist. Uh, we rely on uh, the state, state school facilities program to help support school districts with funds to be able to do construction work such as this. But unfortunately, just uh, with the whims of the legislature, there hasn't been a very consistent support uh, uh, amount of funding that's come to us from the state. So that, that means that we have to rely on our local side. So we, we, we will be getting some dollars from the state. It'll be very limited and very inconsistent. So one of the only ways that we can come back is to look for our local support from our local uh, voters to continue the great work that we're doing in our district to support our schools with, with the passage of Measure Q. Uh, it's an unfortunate predicament. We continue to work with our state legislators to ensure that our schools are our top of priority, that, that funds continue to, get to, to, be, to be provided for our school construction. Uh, unfortunately, it's it's been somewhat of a pendulum. You know, we it, it is not consistent, and we can't rely on it in in a long term uh, uh, plan to be able to bring the necessary improvements to our schools that we need. So, when I think about that, this is kind of a side question because um, we, you know, when we're looking at social media or commentary and stuff, and, and getting you know the the sense from the public when it comes to how we spend money, not just within school bonds, but everything. You know, we hear a lot about COVID money, right? Esser funds and also mm -hmm. you got all this money from the government. Can that money be used? I mean, what, what you know, if, if I'm a, if I'm a taxpayer and I just heard on the news that like, well, you know, the president gave gave schools all of this money or gave the state mm -hmm. this money. I mean, is that something that could have been dipped into to support construction and building schools? Y yes. And we are doing that. And, and we are in, uh, incorporating some of those Esser dollars into some of the work. But it's important to remember that the Esser money was really provided from the federal government for COVID response. So the projects that, that, we've, that we've done and plan on doing with ESSER money include uh, uh, increasing outdoor education opportunities. So things like outdoor shade structures, outdoor green spaces, outdoor classroom environments, upgrades to uh, filtration systems and the improvement to filtration systems at school sites. Uh, but there's a lot of restraints. There's a lot of constraints, I should say, on the use of ESSER money. So, uh, money. so when we talk about uh, some of the other needs that, that, that we have in our district that we've identified in our facilities master plan, ESSER money is not available to be able to do that. So it's a great resource. It's, a lot, it's, it's funds that have been provided to do things like learning loss recovery and, and improvements for air quality and, and uh, health and safety. Uh, but it doesn't meet all of the needs that we have, and it really doesn't do some of the core needs that we have and things like, uh, uh, like you know, uh, CTE programs. We talked about career technical mm -hmm. education programs. We can't use ESSER money for those type of purposes. Right. And it's, it's not long-term, right, as well? And, and it's, it's not. It's very short-term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very short-term on the time frame that we have. We have until 2026 to, to encumber that money and, mm -hmm. and to have that money uh, uh, at least earmarked for projects and, and begin the execution of that money by 2026. I think it's so important. I mean, you talked about consistency in funding, and then I hear restriction a lot. And those are the two terms that I, I think of so much when it comes to funding and education, right? Mm -hmm. of, we sometimes don't know what's going to happen. I mean, you even think if you go back to 2019, 2020, when there was a prediction that there was going to be no money for education, and then there was somewhat of a windfall in certain areas, but there's all these pots and they go, they have all these different regulations and rules on them. So yes. Where can people learn more about Measure Q? So if I want to learn more after this podcast, now I'm, a, I'm, I'm in the community, I really want to be educated on this, where do, where do I go? 
Yeah, thank you. We 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 really pride ourselves on being transparent with the with the monies that that we've been entrusted with, and I use that word consistently, being entrusted with, because these are local resources, and we do we do respect the fact that uh, these are monies that we've been entrusted to do certain work. So the district uh, uh, on our website, we have a host of information available to to the community about not only Measure Q, but also other other aspects of projects that are currently ongoing with some of the other funds that, that we have with our Measure E funds that, that we're still executing. But if you're interested in, in, uh, in specifically about Measure Q, you can go to lbschool.net forward slash future. And if you go to lbschools.net forward slash future, it'll tell you more about Measure Q. It'll, it'll talk about some of the, uh, it'll show you the uh, initiatives that the board has passed. It will give you information about uh, uh, our facilities master plan. And there's just a host of information on there, as well as on our general website, uh, lbschoolbonds.net. So lots of information out there for the public to, to, to research, to, to inform yourself and, and educate yourself on, on the needs of our school district. Perfect. Thanks. You heard that lbschools.net slash future. We'll pl pl plug that one more time just yes. so that the community is aware to check that out. But Alan, thank you so much for joining us today. Not a problem. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm.